when you remain with divinity you are divinized you carry the property of the one you dwell with if you stay with somebody who smells well sir, you will smell well he said if a man a fool has company with wise people even a fool will become wise sir everything in life is by association people die by association and people succeed by association so people make wealth by association and people become poor by association who is your greatest associate who do you remain with i can predict your future by knowing who you remain with god gave me a word as we further the course of discovering the secrets of the apostolic power Today, there is a secret to be revealed in this house. One of the secrets of the apostolic power is what I will share with you today. I've been sharing a couple of them, but from today, let's begin to look at them itemized so you can mention today secret number one that if you apply in your life, like the apostles who began nothing, nobody took them seriously, fishermen, tax collectors, none of them as a scribe none of them as extraordinary none of them as notable but eventually they became the greatest force in the world and we are still reaping the results of their presence so the secret i'm sharing with you today is revealed intentionally to change you and get you on the path that 10 years 20 years no matter whatever is your future God has placed, if you follow you will have different results, number one. You will have different results, number two. You will have God's results in the future. Before then, let's make a declaration of our vision. What you are going to confess if you are new in church and if you are new online, what you are confessing is the vision. Jesus is the vision of God and he brought vision. Jesus is both the vision of God and the bringer of God's vision. The church is a vision. Denomination is a vision. Any denomination that does not have a vision beyond the person who is the leader is a failure of purpose and subject to eternal destruction. So this is a vision that makes us gather here. This is the reason I cannot die. This is the reason I cannot fail. Martin Luther King Jr. said it many years ago, if a man has not found what to die for, he has not found what to live for. This is the vision. This is what I, I can die for, I suffer for. This is why I escaped death. Let's say it together. In grace, family, God is raising champions from ordinary people, champions who will reveal and then force is government in the world so these things should be on your phone personally you should have these scripts so that you speak before you come to church you can tell yourself i'm going as an ordinary person to be raised and when you sit down he said i come in here today as ordinary person before god to be raised by the way if you come before god and you have distinction god has a plan for you he will bring you down for those who are high, God brings down. Those who are lowly, he raises up. So anybody who stays in this congregation and has a high-handed mind and heart, I am your first enemy because God is against you. And I will not be unseemly, but I will tell you the truth. Why? Whom God is against, his servant is the battle act. It's a dangerous thing to serve God as a prophet. Because when your father is against God, you become God's battle axe to deal with your father. And you will not like it. So I've been in this call a couple of years and I know what it means like. So come in here. Number one, know that the vision here is for ordinary people. You can fly private jet and understand ordinariness before God. And then God, mean, God tells you, I will take you to a higher altitude. But you can have nothing and be so proud that there is no place to keep you except in a pit. So you have to change your mind immediately. Every day you come here, just confess your ordinariness before God. When you go as a lecturer before students, please let them know you are a professor. 
convince them you have what it takes to stand there. Don't go to the office as a director and pretend to be ordinary. Be a director of what? As a CEO, be the best. But when you come into his presence, be what? Ordinary. Why? He made you and he still has more for you. Okay. Let's, let's, I say, he will raise ordinary people from what? I mean, to champions. Who will do what? For the first time, let's look at the second slide. No, together, everyone. Now, stay with that slide. We place God how? First. Like I talked about a couple that said yesterday, it was amazing hearing their story. And in gratitude, you say, well, we ask God for this, and this increase has come. We want to share it with you. That is placing God first. If you are too busy for the revelation of his word, you will not be positioned to enjoy his best on earth you will enjoy a portion that cannot be God's best because it is in his word you discover it I'm sharing with you the revelation of the because we, we will confess it at the end of the service but just guys say the God of this world has made them their ears dull so that they will not hear and repent so that I will not heal them. But by the grace of God, I stand as a pastor, as a shepherd. Like David, who used to go after a lion that took a sheep. I go after the God of this world that has stolen your heart from God and the place of God's word. I come after that lion. I snatch you from them. I snatch your heart and your mind from the lions and bears that are against you hearing so that you will not change so that you will not be blessed by God whether it's from family or territory or economy or fear I deliver you from that in the name of Jesus and David said whenever the lion or bear turn against me I struck them so any of the things that I'm asking God to release you from if he turns against me I strike them and I kill both your lion and your bear it was so in the beginning it is so now it shall be so forever for it's the same yesterday today and forever so i take you back from whatever laziness whatever keeps you small whatever makes you comfortable in ignorance and isolates you from the place of knowing how to prosper in god here on earth and enjoy his eternal bliss in heaven i rescue you by the might of the pastor by the might of the shepherd that is christ himself the chief shepherd say i am free in jesus name so what is the secret today the secret number one remaining with jesus we have been talking about follow me answering the call means i follow by now i want to trust god that you have left something you have left you are you have left the old thing and familiar things and you are living living without remaining is equal to going back to what you had left why do people come to church it is time to make confession i'm sorry for my sin lord i accept you as my lord and savior and they just walk back into the same old life the secret is remaining i will peter the fisherman answer the call i will make you fisher fishers of men three years later jesus guys trusted him enough to say you are peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the holy spirit asked me a question this morning he said have you ever heard any of the apostles sick when jesus was around that there was not a moment you heard that jesus healed any of the apostles the only healing in association with the apostle is the mother-in-law of peter why they remained with him when it was time to pay tax somebody came and asked for tax and jesus asked who are the people who pay tax are they aliens or natives he said aliens i said okay so that in order, in order not to offend them go to the to the water you will get fish the first one cut it open take 
from there what will be enough for you and i so it means as long as they remained with him there was no harassment nothing stopped them the wind was strong but he came through for them why they remained with him the reason why after 20 30 years of church going there is no you if christianity were to be left in your hand so that through you people will know that jesus died on the cross sincerely nobody on earth will believe that the son of god came because there is no mark in you paul says let no one trouble me for i carry the marks of christ in the reason why you you look for prophet and have moved from church to church and from another church to another church until this moment you are still finding out whether this one is your church because it doesn't seem to speak your language the reason is because you have not remained you look for prophets but you don't remain with the master that is why things that belong to those who remain they run away from you shame is afraid when you remain disgrace is afraid when you remain this is a secret if you understand this secret you can tell the stories of your life why it has been the way it has been result that should be ordinary are complicated what you should command is commanding you why you call jesus but you don't remain let's go into the scripture praise god praise god i hope you came with your notebook two notebook there is one for assignment sell your shoes sell everything buy notebook buy copy of bible i don't care how many devices you have seen my own bible even if i don't read it it has to be here these devices we don't know what will happen tomorrow so buy bible if you don't have bible sir and you have a car sell it on the road buy bible if the change is not enough for another car bring it for me bring it to me i have what to do with the change just buy bible it's okay for you john chapter 1 verse 35 to 39 praise god again the next day john stood with two of his disciples i'm reading john chapter 1 from verse 35 to 39 and looking at jesus as he walked he said behold the lamb of god that's the greatest work of a man of god pointing people to jesus how do you know a true man of god he points people to jesus not to himself how do we know somebody's pointing people to himself endless controversy making it look like now you get them like like the first lady was saying you know some people are trying to rewrite the bible and to make a personal case that they are extraordinary is uh, pointing people to jesus is just simple he is the whole the lamb not me we know partially we know in part the fullness is found in christ and it is in christ that we are full he said to them behold the lamb he, he had disciples he had his disciples so he was pointing his disciples to the lamb to jesus next verse the two disciples heard him speak they followed jesus this is the work of every man of god everyone called this is the proof that you've met somebody sent by god that he points you and you go that way go that way so if you have been pointed to him and you've not gone that way mm -hmm. very many words to describe but not, none of them is beautiful they followed Jesus and we have been talking about following remember follow, follow me, follow they followed this time around it's not Jesus that said follow me John said that is the one he keeps it all the prophet the senior man of God the mighty man of God confesses that is the one. And they followed. Next, next. Everyone. Then Jesus turned and seeing them, following, said to them, What do you seek? This is very important. Because it is important to know motives. 
one told him i will follow you wherever you go he said ah, foxes have holes birds have nests but the son of man does not have we have to hide he said this he was dealing with the motive of those who followed so it's important to know why are you here today it's important who are you following and why do you follow because the reason of endless movement from one place to another you know roaming around is motive is your motive the motive of god for you or is your motive the motive of your vanity for you and jesus is important that you clarify your motive so one of the assignments you have be seated and write this down as an assignment so why do i go to church you don't need to answer it just write it as a question please write it is for your retreat this week why do i go to church why do i seek god if you seek god for marriage the day you marry god has expired if you seek god for resources the day you have substance god is in the past if you seek god for fame and yourself the day you achieve fame god is now useless you are the god after all you are famous now seeking god for any reason other than god himself and his plan for you is making god a raw material to fashion desire your desire is fashioning god as an idol you see joshua the priest was the first idol creator because israel said make unto us a god make unto us a god that will take care of us that will listen to us this moses moses was going to seek god for his kingdom over israel and they could not wait why do we wait for moses when we can actually have a, a fast as a sap as soon as possible god aaron submitted sir if you stay as a minister only at the priestly level and you don't understand and walk in a dimension of the prophetic you will create idols for people let me tell you one distinction of a minister as priest at the priestly level a minister at the priestly level like Aaron is about the concern of the people a minister as a prophet is about the concern of God then money, marrying the two is the essence of Christian ministry that as a priest you are with the people to take care of them but only in the light of the plan of god in that way you rebuke you correct and when people disagree with you and walk away you don't beg you don't apologize because when you beg and apologize and break the standard you become the idol you give them idol because the plan of god is broken and god is no longer god over them so in the new testament ministry it is a delicate balance between ministry as priesthood and ministry as what a prophetic and this should be very 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 important to you because that is why certain times you don't understand me because i am first of all a prophet before i'm a priest and it's actually my priestly duty is a prophetic call that means i pay attention number one and forever to the perspective of god the motive of god and the plan of god and sometimes i come offish like i don't care i don't have human feeling i don't think about what you're going through why am i always talking like you don't feel what people are feeling the point is that because what i'm seeing god is not feeling what you are seeing and the only way to change what you are going through and feeling is to hear what god says you don't change your condition by listening to your body by listening to your feeling you change your condition by listening to god and the work of a prophet is to bring god's word 
according to God, not according to how He will make you comfortable. These days, the word of God has been diluted to make men comfortable. So the word of God doesn't challenge people again. The word of God does not challenge a husband to be a better man, a wife to be a better woman, and children to submit to their parents, and people to go to the office and liberate those that they are keeping. So the word of God has settled down for the condition of man so that the arrogance is accommodated in arrogance because the word should not rock the boat. That is the idolatry of modern day preaching. And this idol is so attractive. Those who have the greatest followers on social media concerning the gospel check in most cases are people who are idols unto people or creating idol a soft gospel an easy gospel that that connects and that 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 taps into the convenience of the time that the gospel shouldn't challenge your morality it shouldn't challenge your relationship with people and with God. It shouldn't challenge your excellence in their life. It should not challenge you. It's just that you are saved. And the devil will like will be comfortable with that gospel. Because the scriptures that even the devil believes. That's a, the devil is a believer. Only that believing makes him afraid. Because he knows what is ahead. So issue of that i believe i believe that the devil also believes rise to your feet say father in the name of jesus christ uh, when i i want to feel you a little bit more say father in the name of jesus christ i believe but not with the faith of the devil with the faith of the son in jesus name amen so i believe unto salvation say i believe unto salvation I believe in reverence i believe in holiness i believe in righteousness i believe in godliness i believe in god and his son jesus christ i believe in the help of the holy spirit this is what i believe i believe that knowing god changes my life i believe that believing god makes me godly on earth and makes me a challenge to the world of darkness and a standard of godliness in jesus name say i believe be seated be seated be seated so it's important it's important so important so i was just sharing with you a couple of things that the holy spirit has laid in my heart as this message was running through my spirit you see they remain with him they paid tax when there was time for tax they enjoyed the celebrity status they were honored and celebrated because they remained with him by the way they attended no funeral because they remained with him and the only funeral they attended not no funeral going there after funeral they went and raised the dead and these guys were very very powerful just because they raised they remained with him there are things you are not expected to see in life just because you remain with him first of all um let's let's go back to that scripture the two disciples heard him speaking and they followed jesus they followed jesus verse 38 then jesus turned and seeing them following said to them what do you seek so we need to know this is very important did you write it down as an assignment please find out because when you find out and you discover it's not really god that i'm looking for you repent and then god takes over because if it is god you are looking for you cannot be number one your convenience cannot be number one otherwise your god is not more than who come it will come get because whom you follow whom you look for if it is cheap then everything should fall down to your standard but whom you follow and you are looking for if he's king then he stretches you it makes you rise before others rise he said why say the king and by the way you are too small to be the reason of your living and seeking if you are the reason i can i can i can predict you'll be lazy can i tell you something businesses you know i talk about everything and god will help me today can i tell you something about business i do a little bit of stories about everything so i story a little bit about businesses 
and the difference between a businessman and a businessman let me tell you those who are extraordinary in business they are not driven by money they are driven by something greater than money money is about them every great successful don't say dangote is successful yet dangote is the wealthiest african right don't call him successful yet we don't know him let's see what happens when he's dead for those who will leave that time let's see what happens to his business by the second generation that's what you will know what drove him you see if you go to the united states of america and the western world generally you see business that have lasted 400 years it's not money they were looking for the interest was to solve problem to serve people and money became a tool to do that you can no longer be hungry when you have had money but when you wanted to solve problem as long as that problem endures you are hungry it makes you wake up it makes you go out the reason why you start business look at like this part of the world you see somebody starts eatery today tomorrow he employs people he's no longer looking after it he has made some more money he is now associating with big people 10 years later you will never remember he had any business look at filling stations most of them are bankrupt owned by politicians and be those who don't have any business plan except to just make some money when you have made money to build the house you wanted and and have a car that is better than the car of your friend that's what drove you what why should you wake up in the morning why should you pay attention why do churches rise to a point and after sometimes it becomes manipulation the passion why did you start it why do we, why do you do what you do it reaches a point it reaches a point it doesn't matter anything can happen and when the man dies the church dies with him so i've been i mean i've been interested in how people succeed so i read and most of the books i read so i don't read spiritual books i read the bible but i read how things work in this world because the bible must be applied to the world it is on earth we succeed there is no success in heaven or failure once you go to heaven it's a perfect state it is here that the proof of the gospel has to be tested rise to your feet what god has put in your hand will not die before you yeah. lift up your tongue and say what god has put in your hand shall not die before you and when God has called you home, what God has put in your hand will start will start rising all over in Jesus' name. Be seated. Do you know what we are doing in Grace Family is to prepare for 100, 200 years from now? So what we are doing here is to prepare for 200, 300 years from now. Don't call somebody successful until you know the vision of that person. Until you know why the person wakes up in the morning and runs. Please, your motive. Did I say you should write down? And if all you discover is that my son, my daughter, my health, my this and that is the reason I come. By the way, why do you come for communion service and you don't come for another service? So it's not God. So Jesus is asking you, show that scripture I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't come back for communion service next that would be speaking on seemingly assuming. <laughs> you people hear the word of God you don't apply me I hear I apply God forbid I'm not so don't but just answer this question in case this is the last day you live in case because these are things of eternity Jesus Christ asked, can we read it together? Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, yeah, what do you see? They said to him, what? Continue. That's, that's it. That's it. That's the secret we are sharing today. Not rabbi, heal me. Not rabbi. I have this woman that I've been 
looking for opportunity to marry the parents are so difficult that is very beautiful but it's too small to be the reason of seeking it's an insult to seek the king for little trivial things he said seek first the kingdom and Jesus is the kingdom what are you writing down please write down something so you go on and question yourself it's so important because the point is this when people die we feel the whole world has ended sir christianity is to prepare people to die in a godly way because everybody will die how you die unto whom you die into whose hand you die is what makes a difference between a believer and one who is not a believer so these days we think going to church means when I mean I will die means I will not live yet when you reach 120 years what will you be doing it's so boring you just lie down and hear things you no longer walk around you no longer <laughs> but the important is that while I live on earth sir that's the impact sir <laughs> that's what carrying Christ should make you heavy enough that you walk upon the rock and your footprints are left on the rock and when you are gone people can follow the trail they say a being walked the earth and heaven will smile well you come they say well done you lived you lived the people who exist they did not live That's what Christianity offers me, offers me, sir. I break every rule to live. So, uh, when God calls me home, this generation will not forget me. And generations to come will remember me. Why? I intend to live. And by the way, I'm leaving footprints on the rock. Rock is what is difficult. What is challenging to do, sir, when you leave the footprints on the rock, you carry something heavier than the rock. And so, how do you carry God and walk on the rock and you don't leave footprints? Dada, say, I cannot die without impact. Stand up. Say, I cannot live and die without impact. <laughs> say it again like you are swearing, but you don't need to swear. But say it like you are swearing, but don't swear. Say, in the name of Jesus, I cannot live without impact. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I mention your name by the grace of God I will leave my mark on the rock sir sir that's Christianity God bless you come let me hug you God bless you sir ah, you cannot enter a place and leave it like that you you walk into situations that are called impossible and people will see the mark on the stone because impossible is the rock and by the way God told Moses speak to the rock and he left the mark on the rock till today we are reading it in the Bible water came from the rock when you carry God as your weight sir the rock will have effect so how can that is why I have issues with people who say once you believe no matter what happens you go to heaven shut up that's nonsense you are not called for heaven you are called to reveal God on earth heaven is a resting place not a walking place you are safe to walk to bear fruit just can't say you bear fruit even fruit that will last you don't bear fruit in heaven where are these liars from who opened the door for these liars to infiltrate my generation? May God drive them out of existence. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Christianity is a business of changing the world. This is the confidence I had to resign from the Catholic priesthood. Until tomorrow he hurts some people and have no apologies. So only one life. You have to leave marks on the rock. Make a covenant with God. I cannot die insignificant. I cannot live a life that is not significant. Lift up your two hands and speak in anger in under anointing. He said, hey, my children 
will carry mark. My marriage will carry mark. My business will carry mark. My political career will carry mark. My vision will carry mark. I cannot live lightly and weightlessly. Carry mark. Carry mark. So I speak. You still have another another one minute to speak. Carry mark. Carry mark. Carry mark. You cannot. You cannot be an ordinary businessman. Being a businessman that carries Christ means you live max on the rock. Somebody has to live, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated, be seated. I don't want to bore you. I love knowledge. I studied philosophy first before theology. So my first degree in life was philosophy. That's what the Catholic Church offers to priests. There is a little bit of some negative thing there. But the good of it is that it makes you think and aware. I was interested in Greek philosophy. And I studied in political philosophy and discovered what the Greek called immortality. Immortality for the Greek is nothing spiritual. For the Greeks, immortality was not afterlife. I became interested in it immortality for the greek is here and now for a runner who was faster than every other person he achieved immortality for as long as they will remember him as the fastest runner fastest runner so in olympics people achieve immortality <laughs> and so people trained extraordinarily in order to leave a mark so Achilles achieved immortality. Those who did extraordinary things, people like Aristotle for the Greeks is immortal. Every generation makes reference to who? Aristotle. They shaped Western cultures. And sir, by my understanding of that immortality, it became clear to me that in Christianity, we make a mistake of thinking that immortality is only the other world, the other spirit. So here we live carelessly. And when we are gone, nobody remembers we live. Just that I will go to heaven. A poor heaven. People like Paul, they achieved immortality on earth. For as long as the Bible endures, you say, Paul said, I beat myself my body and bring it under control lest I preach to others and myself become a cast out these guys left mark on the stone and they are gone hundreds of years and thousands of years people are talking about Paul every day immortality <laughs> so there is a spiritual immortality means living with God forever but as long as the world endures there will be immortality. People like Mark Zuckerberg in the future will achieve immortality. Men who drag the world into social space and change the way people related. How many marriages come from Facebook and social media? Out to a dropout. So I, I study how the world succeeds in order to know how to apply the Bible. People who don't know God cannot make impact. And you carry God and remain a third class citizen and you eat communion these men who have left marks on the wall they don't eat communion do you know what communion is and you think i can be small and ordinary sir i am intimidating if i intimidate you you either stay and grow or run and no apologies so i cannot carry what i carry and beg for help i create help a system of help rise say me I make mark on the stone. Make mark on it. Say, so I make impact upon the rock. I make impact. Glory. Be seated, sir. Welcome to the feast of the world, sir. I love it. Love it. So I'm interested in knowledge. I love to learn. And to know how to apply this gospel that I carry. And the Christ that I carry. To make this world not forget. I have a covenant. 
that I will not see death until I use Christ to change the world. Sir, it's an ambition. Sir, it's a vision. I don't have any problem if I don't fulfill it, but I want to. I hope to. I cannot carry Jesus Christ and use Jesus to kill mosquito and kill cockroach. When you kill cockroach, Jesus! Paul used Jesus to bring kingdoms under the authority of God. Paul used Jesus to cast out demons from temples. Sir, this is a generation that we must walk around shrines by, just by walking past to and fro. The following day, the, the place will fall. And you say, why did this thing fall? Sir, a mighty force blew. That's why when I had my children backing in the Holy Ghost, praying like there was fire somewhere, I say, ah, that's the future. The parents are contesting with me. Oh, look at your children they will turn your house into a house of fire so that the day you don't pray you feel terrible because your children reminded you you cannot be fathered by a, fat, by a prayerless father I'm sorry that's unseeming <laughs> oh praise God praise God they say where are you staying where are you staying means a boat it means I don't want to shake hands with you and walk away La, 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 la. See, re read it, everyone. They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated, teacher. I didn't hear you. Sir, so when somebody tells you, Where are you staying? The, the person is either invading your privacy or making an overture. Overture means advances, I want to stay with you, or security question, I want to harm you. <laughs> but in this case it's not a security question it's an overture question it's like I'm not seeking anything I seek you but I'm not seeking you in person I'm not seeking you for for Gary and so that's in person how many of you remember the sweetest food you ate last year when I'm fasting Sometimes I just sit down and remember very beautiful food that I ate. <laughs> but I now realize it's stupid. My father used to sit down. I'm sorry, my sibling may be hearing. Sorry, I'm sorry. My father, when we things were so poor, and my father would sit down and talk for like one hour about the good days. How he would sit down and fresh fish and these and these and talk. And we are so hungry. And then we didn't be sad of it. <laughs> just be like, are we eating now? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry Ada. They, um, you know God had to take my father before I started a call because <laughs> they would disown me <laughs> disown. and my father one thing I took from that was that if he was good then he would be good again so that's the good part of it he remembered it has not always been like this the scripture say I recall therefore I have hope I recall I recall what do you recall when we eat communion they say in memory that means recall I died then leave recall I was wounded then be healed so my father will sit there and just recall and he will tell you my children it will be well again sincerely used to recall and as a child i used to really get very offended and the way he would talk about it it was a very very poor very poetic very artistic he would paint the picture and you begin to salivate and it's so annoying because when you are hungry and you hear about good food it makes you hungry but now i understand my father was provoking who i used to eat well i will eat well again glory to god sir what do you seek and they say, where do you dwell? Where do you, where do you stay? Where do you stay? Have you ever asked? Have you ever wondered? Where does he live? Where does his, his love live? Where does he live? Where does his love live? Where does his mercy live? Where does his compassion? Have you ever sought his compassion? Have you ever relocated from you to him? And this man who changed the world, they say, where do you live? And we are, we feel the church and we have no impact. Our children are on drugs. Because they don't see us dwell with him. Our children are, are prostitutes before they know what prostitution is. Our children discover pornography from phones of parents. 
and they are addicted to masturbation and all forms of destructive habits before they are 15 because you go to church but you don't know where he dwells the scripture says you are no longer alien but you are citizens rise say today in the name of jesus christ the dwelling of god is my dwelling the dwelling of jesus is my dwelling listen the scripture says in the psalm is that one day within your court is greater than better than a thousand elsewhere it's better for me to be a gatekeeper in the house of god so do we still resource scripture those of you come to church like you come to pity a pastor and come at convenience and come when it is convenient and come like you should be back because there are doubts in the gospel in the body of christ who go about begging people to be members and they give them no life so when you meet somebody and he's telling you the truth say, hey, you finish, you, you won't hold you for to this single to this church people are begging for members and if you talk like that i'm not coming back okay raise your hand raise your hand say the dwelling of god is my dwelling what happens to god happens to me what god enjoys i enjoy say master where do you live where do you be seated say where are you staying he said to them come verse 39 let's read it together Verse 39, he said to them, Come and see. Come and do what? See. The scripture says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. You have to engage. Christianity is a craft, it has to be practiced. Why are witches more powerful than many Christians? They practice wickedness, and believers do not practice God. Christianity is a craft. It is meant to be practiced. It's not nominal. And they will say in Nigeria, Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. So every Muslim you see is a Muslim. Oh? One way or the other. But when you hear Christian is occupying this office, Muslims use them as they like. Because most Christians don't know the arts of their God. So when we say Christian, this thing is just nominal. They use and do nonsense. Christianity is not for politics. The reason today, the reason today Europe is no longer Christian is because people stop practicing the craft of Christ. Islam is rising in America and in the Western world with the with speed unprecedented why young more young people in the western world are turning to islam why they see christian nothing is practiced but muslims they practice something that is why when something happens in iraq that they call them isis islamic state of whatever whatever it was so young people relocated from across the world including nigeria to go and fight the battle of allah it is practice that's why they are powerful Christians don't practice their God. They are hopeless. Look at Nigerian politics. Christians are beggars. Christians are beggars. I don't want to talk nonsense here. I could say something. Christians are beggars. Christians are beggars. Christians are beggars in Nigerian politics. Let anybody tell me I'm saying the, I'm not saying the truth. They beg for relevance. Is Islam that owns this nation because they practice? You see, Christians walk around talking nonsense, using Christianity to look for office. He said, Let them let there be balance. So there is no practice. That man that is talking about any normal Muslim, his money, a certain amount of money goes into promoting Islam every year, and it cannot be joked with. That's what they use in sponsoring places. Building magnificent edifice where people are poor. Many of our Christians who are in political office, 
you have to beg them to come for a function. You have to beg them to come to church. And when they come to church, they feel like they are doing you favor. And they make promise that they don't fulfill. And when they give you something, you have to go bow down, carry drink to console them. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. That's why they have to beg. Look at look at Tinibus. Look at Tinibus cabinet. Ministry of Defense has to go there. Ministry, very strategic, powerful places have to go there. Why? If you joke with them, somebody who is Minister of Defense has no knowledge of the defense sector. But you say, you say, how's that Muslim? How's that Fulani? Now, it is a way of saying that we keep power here. And so when we talk about Christians and uh, Sir, there are a few things we know and it, we are waiting for the future. Waiting for. We want to prophesy people into a place of dominion. But it, it must be people who can practice their craft. The craft of their Christ. You sit down here shamefully. When last did you pay tithe? You cannot even bring tithe. It's in Christianity we use all manner of nonsense on social media. It discourage people giving for the cause of Christ because there are doubts who have no business in ministry except to feed their belly. And then after their belly, their vanity. And so people, people deal with principles. In the ancient tithe and every giving was to keep those in the work and to maintain the work. One day we'll teach on tithe. Why I'm not yet ready? Because many people come as strangers. You say one truth, they disappear. Trying to keep you long enough to be converted. Before I tell you certain things. I'm sorry, is that unseemly? You have to practice this thing. This thing has to be practiced. It is only when you practice that you dwell. You stay with him. They didn't say, what, what do you have? When do you have service? When will you hear people? Just guys say, come and see where I dwell. So the day you dare to ask God, I want to be close to you. I want to stay with you. I want to be known by you and for you. He will tell you, come and see. His longing, his heart longs for companionship with somebody whom he died for. He died for you, not for your food. There are people who eat better food and they don't call the name of Jesus. So the wealthiest person you know is he a Christian? The wealthiest people in Nigeria, in, in Nigeria and Africa, how many of them are Christians? In the world right now. So you cannot come to him Sir, God is blessing people here. The testimonies are here from the youngest. So, I, I, I'm sitting down and so honored. These things are additional. He said, seek ye first the kingdom. And all these things, all other things shall be added. I said, the God who adds everything to me, sir. Who told you I can be poor? It's not possible. It's not possible. Who told you I can lack? It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. God adds everything. So I cannot be sick. God adds health to me. Dr. Ekbo took my routinely checks my body. Checks my body. We just finished another one. Just finish another one. The first lady accused me once. Mosquito, we are staying in the same room. In the same room. Mosquito will bite me and bite you. And you don't have malaria. And I have malaria. I told her, grow up. Grow up. You catch up. I cannot carry what I carry inside. And then be hopeless outside. Rise. <laughs> Ask somebody, what do you carry? How heavy is your God? And by the way, where is your God? Say, as for me and my family, I will dwell. I will dwell. Speak it out. Say, as for me and my, and my household, I will dwell. Be seated, sir. Okay, let's look at the word. Uh, okay, look, they came. Can we complete it? Come and see. What happened? Read it. One, two, go. They came and did what? So where he was staying. What happened? That day. That's it. That's the secret of our doubts. Fishermen. Men of little honor and substance became so powerful that they have left their marks 
on the rock. I read a little bit of history how Christianity penetrated the Roman world. By the time that Paul was Paul was living, Paul lived around maybe after the, about 30 years, 50 years, that was when Paul was preaching. Around 30 years or so after Christ had ascended. But by the time Paul was still ministering, members of the house of emperors were Christians. Read, read, read the scripture. People in the household of emperor, the highest authority, had servants among them. How did these men do this? That's Mark, sir. That's Mark. They dwelt with him. They, they stayed. Let's look at the Greek word that is translated remained. Because the secret, the secret number one we are trying to discover is the secret of remaining. Remaining. Sir, if you can understand it and practice it, you will have apostolic results. <laughs> Apostolic result is that nobody gives you room, you make room. That's apostolic result. From the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God suffers that. And sir, violent people take it not by persuasion and negotiation, by storm. So I don't wait for room to be created for me, I create room. Since I answer this call, no authority will say, I did this, I did this. That is why he's here. I have created room. I am speaking boastfully about this because the grace is from Christ. I make room. The grace of God in me enables me. I make and create rooms where nobody could see room. That's why it's exciting to be a former Catholic priest who is pastoring you. Sir. It's a great opportunity and we are creating room. And people are watching us. Let them watch you. So those who have been watching me, they are still watching me now. So don't join those who are watching. Be part of it. Because eyes have not seen. The Greek word that is translated remain is menu. 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 Menu means to stay. Menu is just M E N O. In Greek, there is Omega as big O. There is Omicron as little O. This one is big O. So you can put something like a bar on top of that O. It becomes Menu, a big O. Menu means to stay, it means to abide. So the scripture said they stayed with him. It means to abide. It means to continue. So when the scriptures, they remain with him. They may know with him. It means they, they continue with him. So people come and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but they don't continue. People come to church. When they did, they say, oh, um, uh, I said them. You know, you're sweet. Communion service is always like that. But they don't remain. And so the devil snatches everything they are received. Uh, God cannot be mocked. The measure you give is the measure you receive. Those who don't remember with God, they are constantly in need. Check your life. You don't have a remaining life with God. You are constantly in need. You don't have satisfaction. Satisfaction is in remaining. So, people look for little excuses. They say, fear, fear price. And fear price tells you not to come to church again. But you are going to other places. See the logic of poverty. See the language and the wisdom of, fully, of, of poverty. If God is God, as we talk, God is. In the time of trouble, it's the time to rise earlier. To menum longer. To continue. Ah, what is the secret of Joshua? After Moses will stand before God at the tent. And when Moses will leave, the scripture says, Joshua will remain. Sir, the one who remains is the one who takes over. I gave you a testimony today about a young girl that began the school of the Holy Spirit. 
began the school of the Holy Spirit. As I'm talking, she's here. I would have loved to see her. And she said she was in a car wash, maybe as a secretary or whatever. And she was always taking permission from the, from the owner of the car wash, the manager. And the man said, choose between going to school of the Holy Spirit in your church and working with me. He said, you cannot continue there and stay here. She walked away and came. She said, God gave her an idea and she started something very insignificant. I said, well, how is your life? And I said, ah! She exclaimed, my life cannot be compared. What, gave me, what God gave me as a little idea is paying my bill. I am wealthy and richer. I'm expanding. So that is what it means to be hungry to menu to remain. That's a minister. As a minister. If not that the first lady has talked about not talking on seeming word, I will have said something. Can I tell you what I wanted to say? The other girl, the other girl still in the interview room. One of, I just talked about the young girl that said she was told to quit. You know, primary, I mean, teaching in nursery school, which could have been 10,000 or whatever. And she's a civil servant. So, when you know whom you dwell with, the scripture says the kingdom of God is like a man who was looking for a fine pearl. And when he had discovered one of great treasure, he went and sold everything and bought it. How can I pastor dying people? Who in the time of hardship, when people should rise early and menu, when people, when everybody is running away from God, they should hear because the widow of Zarephath heard and live. Who pastored you? Many of you have gone through three, four churches. So, okay, go, go. What did you hear? That you are giving me so much pain. Today, somebody will remain. I say, somebody will remain. And the guarantee is that if you remain, you will smell the fragrance of God. Sir, have you ever stayed longer in a pit toilet? Oh, sorry, you, when you didn't grow up in a village. I'm sorry, that's not see me. Let me just permit this one. Just this one. Sir, you go to a toilet that is not properly washed and you stay there 30 minutes, come out, and you want to hug somebody, sir, somebody will go back. Because where you remain longer will give you a smell. Stand up, call on no panic call. Stand up and rest and clap and give a shout. Give a shout. Be seated. I have a word for a young woman called Mary. Mary, I'm watching her and I think God is watching her. Watching her. Mary will come to, like every every first Friday before communion service. The seraphs they tarry to pray. And to practice, yes. And I hear them and hear when they sleep. And in the school of the Holy Spirit, the following day, you come. Mary is on her feet from the beginning of that school of the Holy Spirit till the end. Whether she's ministering or not, I have never demanded that of her. She recognizes that she's my first music minister. And without any imposition, she will remain. She's the only person so far that I've seen that God revealed to a man, take your car, this car, and go and give to her. And the person hesitated, and God went to a family, spoke to a family, buy a car for this girl. And during that time, I was talking to the seraphs, God, Mary has touched the heart of God, God wants to honor this woman. So, how will God not honor somebody? I, I, I looked at her yesterday, me, I would be think, and she thinks I don't see, and and you can't understand. During program, she sleeps on the floor with her two children. In this compound, in the office, no bed, nowhere. With her two children. Nobody asks her to. In order to wake up when we have morning service or whatever. And you just look at her. And can't you predict her future? And she's the only person I know. God had to talk to two individuals. Give her a car. One day somebody will tell her. Someone, God will tell someone, go and build a house for her. As I'm talking, you will hear. One day you will hear. That. So, how can you understand that secret? And have sickness? How can you have that secret? 
and be like other people. I know Mary. I knew her when she was eight years old. Then I knew her when she was 25 years old. I've watched her. I've seen a girl transmuted, translated into a different me. And she has come to discover God and she remains. She remains. I just want to let you know in this place, people have discovered something. You're busy running around looking for who will sleep with you and give you transportation. Whereas people are remaining and people receiving command. Go and give her your car. And somebody hesitated. Another family was asked. And that car was bought with urgency. Bought with urgency. So this thing we are talking about. What are you seeking? So these days that when people feel church. Say we are running four services. And the hall is filled. What are they looking for? What are they seeking? Who knows where glory lives? Who knows where kindness lives? Who knows where mercy lives? Who knows where power, where power lives? They seek the power of the preacher, but they don't seek the power of God because they have not remained. So when you remain with a fool, you tap into foolishness. When you remain with divinity, you are divinized. You carry the property of the one you dwell with. If you stay with somebody who smells well, sir, you will smell well. He said, if a man, a fool, has company with wise, with wise people, even a fool will become wise. So, everything in life is by association. People die by association. And people succeed by association. So, people make wealth by association. And people become poor by association. Who is your greatest associate? Who do you remain with? I can predict your future by knowing who you remain with. This is a generation where young women donate themselves to irresponsible men and remain with them and give you birth to children and walk away older than their grandmother. And if in the future they tell you their age, you say it's not true. You cannot be that young and look this old. They remained with destruction and hopelessness. When you remain with God, nobody, no man will tell you until you go to bed with me. I cannot marry you. Somebody will not sleep until he pays your bad bride price. Uh, sir, there is an urgency upon the heart of somebody to bless somebody who remains. Sir, the day God asked me to bless somebody, I don't sleep. Oh. And the day God asks you to bless somebody, you cannot sleep. He takes everything from you. Remain. Rise. Say, I have found the secret. Lift up your two hands and say, I have found a secret. This is what they saw. This is what they discovered. Say it with me. This is what they discovered. And I have discovered it also. What worked for the apostles will work for me. I didn't hear you say, so what worked for the apostles will work for me. So what is the meaning of may no be seated? What is the meaning of remaining? To continue. To abide. To dwell. To endure. When you remain with him, you can endure circumstances. You know he will come for you. When you don't know him and it is your belly you are looking for, you cannot endure. So you jump about. You are not seeking God. You are seeking your stomach. As if your stomach can help you. So may know to remain means to continue. To dwell. To endure. To tarry. So that night they tarried with him. Glory to God. John chapter 15. To remain is a command. Jesus commands you to remain. Jesus commands you to remain. John chapter 15 verse 1 to 4. Is a command. It says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me. That does not bear fruit. It takes away. And every branch that bears fruit. It prunes. That it may bear more fruit. Verse 3. You are already clean. Because of the word. You see the word. The word. Trust that we are here. And we are having the season of speed. And it's by the word. God has given me seven laws of speed sir. I have never taught it before. It's extraordinary. Seven laws of speed. Apply it anywhere on earth, it will work. This is a season. The world. How can you meet me, sir? Many years ago, God revealed to me through somebody, he said, I have put my word in your mouth. 
and I saw in the scripture, say, I have put my word in your mouth and cover you with my hand. That was the day I knew that I cannot have misfortune in preaching the word. That God spoke to me in his word. He said, I have put my word in your mouth and cover you with my hand. That day I received eternal security that no demon, no demon, no devil, no Satan can harm me in the process of this call. Why? The one who put his word in my, in my mouth has also covered me with his hand. The word, sir. If you meet me, you meet the word. And if you are not attracted to the word that I bear, and you don't create a room for the word that I bear, you have no benefit in this call. I don't see people's undies. I don't see, I don't see the call of what people were in. Her. And I don't know people's phone number. I don't know people's story. I know God's story over people. And I cannot change. I cannot change. Look at verse 3. Oh, let's go to verse 4. What does verse 4 say? Everyone read it. Abide in me is a command. And uh, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Oh, a branch cannot prosper of itself. A branch cannot be healthy of itself. A branch cannot be provided for of itself. A branch cannot be secured of itself. It must remain. Unless it abides, may know the same word in the vine. Neither can you, unless you do what? That means all the fruitfulness is in one secret. What is the secret? Remain. This is the secret of the apostolic power, number one. Don't forget this place. I give you the entire world instead of forgetting this. Few things. Let's end this. To remain brings about closeness. When you remain with God, when you remain with Jesus, you will be close. You will have closeness with Jesus. Closeness is very powerful. Closeness is very powerful. If you are close to the president, you are powerful. Closeness. If you are close to somebody who has sickness that is contagious, you will be sick. So life is determined by closeness in many areas. To remain brings about what? Closeness. Closeness brings about relationship. When you are close to somebody, if you are close to your, your hairdresser, it's a matter of time you become, you have a relationship with who? That hairdresser. Somebody, the stylist of the first lady, whom we met during our wedding and we intervened he wanted to quit his beauty business God used us to minister to him and he's doing well extraordinarily he's no longer doing something with us he's in a relationship with us he's a member of our life because of that closeness closeness brings about relationship relationship brings about access please write it down when you are in a relationship with somebody you have access that means whatever the person has you have access to it if the person has political power you have access and people die join secret cult of the people that have access in order to have access and you have god who is the owner of all things and you don't value closeness you don't value relationship you don't have access so you beg for your rights so government needs me. I don't need government. It's true. I know it. I don't want to explain. Don't want to explain. Sincerely. Can make nyanga because I know those in government they need me. Government needs me. If you joke with certain people in a territory, you die young. I am one of those that if you joke with me in this territory, you die young. This is what I'm saying. I am on social media. Why am I saying this? God called me and said, go home. Your people need you. I am an authority in this place. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this seeming? Why? I enjoy the greatest access. Closeness brings about access. Relationship. So if you have a relationship with God, you have access to the greatest power in heaven and on earth 
you can stop the lion from roaring and you can stop the python from swallowing rise to your feet by the might of God I draw a line between you and destruction in the name of Jesus be seated be seated be seated sorry today I just feel like I'm talking too much so relationship brings about access access makes available resources when you have access to somebody all the resources of that person they are at your disposal the money of the person you have access to sir, that money will pay your bill so remaining with God brings about closeness closeness brings about relationship and relationship brings about access access makes the resources of god available the peace of god the joy of god the power the favor the speed the success the provision the health and all of these that belong to god they are available to somebody who has access resources bring about security when you have resources you are secure resources bring security sir when you have no resources you don't have security you are at the mercy of events when you have resources you can pull through the most difficult time unscathed nothing happens to you so remaining with god eventually leads to resources divine resources and resources will provide divine security and security brings about rest have you followed what i've asked you have you followed the sequence please follow these things were revealed to me in the place of prayer i was just sitting as a write it down and i wrote them to remain brings about closeness closeness brings about relationship relationship brings about access access makes available resources all the resources of god go and sit down and find out how many resources are in god they are available to somebody who have access resources bring about security and security brings about rest matthew chapter 11 verse 29 to 30 we are done matthew chapter 11 verse 29 to 30 take my yoke upon you and learn from me when you say take my yoke upon you it means remain with me because a yoke a yoke is what connects two people together for you to understand you understand two animal like 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 cow drawing something that was used in the ancient even tractors do now drawing what plows the yoke is what connects those two animals or three together for as long as under they are under the same yoke they remain together that means they share results so the result of the plowing does not belong to one cow that means when you remain with god you share success with god write it down that is rest look at that scripture look at that scripture take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart complete the rest complete the rest complete the rest everyone complete the rest you will find the rest so remaining with god ultimately leads to what rest sir there are those who do business in rest there are those who marry in rest there are those who study in rest there are those who minister in rest uh, those who minister in ten under tension and struggle and begging and and uh, those who marry with by tears that those who do business and eat their finger ask them they don't remain and they don't have rest check your life now in what area of life do you have rest except satan is giving you rest if satan gives you rest it means you are condemned to eternal destruction don't worry you will go to hell except you repent today but when god gives you rest sir when others are dying you are rejoicing you are buying up when others are selling life is heavy and extremely difficult if you are alone life is better when you share life and sharing life with god is the greatest blessing of life sharing life with god by remaining it means everything of god belongs to you in the time of sorrow his eyes are upon the sparrow and you are the sparrow the testimony of the great influence of the apostle because they remain with us look at acts of apostle chapter 4 i'm done i'm done i'm done acts of apostle chapter 4 verse 13 write this one down please write this 
Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and then continue. And they, come on, come on. They had been with him. That means they continued with him. They remained with him. They abode with him. They, they stayed with him. They stayed with him. You cannot have ordinary results in life if you remain with Jesus. You cannot have ordinary. If right now you are having ordinary results, all you need is to remain. Four steps to achieve remaining in Jesus. Four steps. And I'm done. Four steps. Four steps. Are you ready? Step number one, you take a decision for Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you have already taken that decision, but you did not remain, renew that decision today. That decision is not just to say, I accept you as Lord and Savior. I accept you, and from today, I remain. I want to smell your smell. I want to perceive your fragrance. I want to see what you see. I want to hear what you hear. I want to, com I want to command what you command. Have you written that? Number two continuous personal study of his word personal continuous personal study of his word on thursday the bible plan for this house will be unfolded and it is only on thursday we we'll make it available don't pastor sunday son i rejected sunday sunday parishioners as a seminarian i say god forbid i cannot give up everything in life to come and pastor people who just come to church on sunday those hook up people, all sort of people. Everybody comes to church on Sunday. Seekers of God are extraordinary, extra days, extra time. You have to create personal time for personal stories of His Word. Personal time, personal stories of His Word. So, Emmanuel Jackson will unveil one year, six months study plan in this house. Let people follow. This is a time to make champions, leave others behind leave others behind people should rise number three continuous personal prayers and fasting as lifestyle personal prayers and fasting must be lifestyle not something you do once in a while so today write down before you go to bed today set aside your personal prayer and story time is different from that of the family as a husband if you don't have a personal time that you talk to god God will not have a time to talk to you about your family. As a wife, if you don't have a personal time to talk to God, God will not talk to you about your husband and your children. So family time with God is absolutely necessary. But there has to be personal time. Personal time. Without personal time, a father cannot be a priest over the family. And the mother cannot be a prophetess over the family. So there has to be continuous personal prayer and fasting as lifestyle. We are fasting nine days. It started on the first. How many people are aware of it? And today is the third day of the fast. Tomorrow shall be the fourth day. God spoke to me as we were about entering, entering September. I said there will be fast in this house. And as I came to the place of ministry on the first on Friday, God told me, ask for help. Divine help. That's scripture. Samuel cried and the Lord turned that out and gave him help and he wrote down Ebenezer thus far the Lord has helped us so I have been helped I have been helped so you have to set aside personal time Your pers on Wednesday every Wednesday is a covenant fast every Wednesday write it down put it in your calendar if you sit down and want to eat breakfast and you hear you remember it's, Wednesday is fasting drop breakfast if you have ulcer, start your fasting the, a day before. So that on the day of fasting, you are already healed. Number four. Have I given you number four? Are you still with me? Continuous and intentional engagement with fellowship. A church that comes on Sunday is a church of obligation and law. In this part of the world. So going, not going to church looks like you are the worst person. So people come to church on Sunday and sometimes it has nothing to do with God. So when I see you here, like in these days of speed, I see you on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that is somebody who remains. That's a seeker of God. Tomorrow, fire, fire Tuesday. I mean, the fireplace. So many people can create time. Laziness. How can you remain with God and be lazy? 
you have different excuses sir excuse does not raise a dead man excuse does not does not reverse does not reverse divorce somebody talked about in the fireplace how i gave a word he kept talk, mentioning about words that came and went back and it happened the same way the same way it's a prophetic move and mighty in the holy ghost is to make people extraordinary so continuous intentional engagement with fellowship sunday monday thursday the radio whatever is happening you know sacred time you say our pastor is preaching on thursday on radio on social the tv so you create time you catch up on social media if you could not have time for location meeting catch up on social media because you are trying to remain the word the word the word number four not number five have i given you number four number five daily practice of the word sir you must practice what you hear you must practice what you read without practice there is no effect what is the secret of barcelona what is the secret of pep guardiola what is the secret why is nigeria always with big stars and they fail when last did nigeria do something substantial sir no practice no practice look at the falcons have you heard the story of falcons no preparation for that world cup it was just sheer determination the, no practice it is practice that brings results you must practice the word in giving you practice in sowing you practice in fasting you practice in prayer you practice in love you practice caring one another for one another you practice if you sit down here you have been coming with car look for somebody who goes your direction practice love practice help before you come look for somebody around your neighborhood practice wait and put somebody in your car drop somebody off you see somebody who cannot afford to pay during this season practice you go to the office practice practice dominion practice prophetic declaration put the word of god into practice you are sleeping with somebody who's not your husband practice the word go and say it's over say what happened say christianity is a is a is, is, is a craft i'm practicing purity i'm practicing holiness i'm practicing prayerfulness i'm practicing consecration and practicing dedication practice once you practice you it brings skill those who practice they display skill they have confidence they have results ronaldo is extraordinary by practice the reason i prefer ronaldo to messi ronaldo is the product of hard work and practice messi is just talent sir if you give me between a hard worker and a talent i look for a hard worker why hard work deserves honor and respect talent is natural rise oh before you rise assignment i'm sorry i'm sorry assignment set your personal family covenant time of study and prayer today all of you are married and you don't pray with your wife i forgive you if you don't pray from tonight you need to go to confession. I used to be a Catholic priest. You have to come and kneel down before me and confess. I went back from church, but I didn't pray with my wife and children. And if you have not been talking to your wife, as long as she's still your wife, don't wait for your wife to apologize. Go and tell her, honey, I am the head. I lead. Let's talk. You cannot sit down here. You are not talking to your wife, not talking to your children. Set your personal family time. You cannot pray with your wife every day and wake up one day and kill your wife. And use the money you should use in taking care of your wife and take care of short skirted people and and night life set your personal fire and family covenant time of, of study and prayers personal and family number two last of it create time for corporate staying in fellowship the scripture says do not give up the habit of meeting together so you have to create time today you are busy at work on thursday come late you are busy come late on friday you are permitted to come late during weekdays come from the office and go back late eat late because you were creating time to remain with god that is how you tap 
into divine health that is how god takes sickness from the midst of thee you have to make in yourself inconvenient to remain that's how you tap into access right have you written the assignment go go write it down when you write it down next week we'll see so what is happening on thursday speed right yeah so make it. if you are coming from who you start just make just you will not see god happen for you until you put yourself in a difficult situation you cannot prove god when you, it is convenient for you rise to your feet let's have a moment of consecration drop everything all eyes close eyes close hands lifted simple confession say lord jesus christ today is for me i have discovered the secret the way you are speaking you are speaking in sorrow like you don't like it speaking like is the greatest thing so lord jesus christ thank you for sending me this timely message i am sorry that i have been wandering around and have not paid attention to remaining in you today i have heard your word your word says that if you will hear his word today do not harden your heart i have heard your word today i will not harden my heart so lord jesus christ i come to you like those two disciples where do you live where is your mercy where is your forgiveness where is your healing where is your righteousness where is your holiness i want you for you so i give you the whole of my life my marriage my children my future my business mention other things that you give everything i don't want to live alone again i give you everything 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 give you everything say so lord jesus christ i repent from seeking after things and not seeking you i repent from laziness and from carelessness i repent from making myself above putting my convenience above being with you say i repent from making my convenience first and making being with you second from today you are first i give you my convenience i give you my rest everything i have they are in you i want access access through you to the father access to the holy spirit jesus you are the way you are the truth you are the life today i accept you and accept to remain with you give me all of you begin to receive him now personally all of you i believe you died for me give me all of your death give me all of your resurrection give me all of your spirit give me all of your health give me all of your resources give me all of your light please speak please speak give me all i want to remain with you 